Okay, today we have an interesting Pyrrhic victory in the fight for freedom. This one is about both the First and Second Amendments, your right to speech and your right to keep and bear arms. And this is coming out of, oddly enough, the Ninth Circuit. They have lifted a ban on 3D printed gun blueprints. That's a mouthful. The CAD files for 3D printed guns were illegal to distribute. The Trump administration tried to make them legal. A judge stepped in. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But I say I want to point out that this is a Pyrrhic victory because the Biden administration is expected to propose new restrictions on ghost guns by May 8th. Of course, ghost guns is the name that people who don't really know anything about this stuff call them because they're weird. But that being said, let's talk about this. I'm Nick Riccata of Riccata Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. I'm a lawyer, but I'm also a legal and political commentator here on YouTube. If you like that stuff, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and also share this around to other people so they understand what freedom is, you know, this and other videos, so, uh, so that we can build a community of people who understand, respect, and fight for freedom, all right? Anyway, here's what we've got. The Ninth Circuit, yes, I know that when they make a correct decision, it's, it should be newsworthy, and it is. And it is. They have lifted a ban on 3D printed gun blueprints. Now, this goes way back, okay? This is a picture of Cody Wilson holding a Liberator. This is probably the most famous 3D printed gun that's out there. Have you ever seen one? Do you have one? Have you seen one that your friend has or anything like that? Probably no. Despite it being the most famous, you may have only seen a picture of it or whatever. What you haven't seen is a bunch of news reports about Liberators murdering people. However, if we look at the history of 3D printed guns in the media, you will understand that 3D printed guns mean all of civilization is going to collapse. If we put the means of making guns in the hands of people with 3D printers, then there will be untraceable guns running around murdering children and dictators alike. There will be political assassinations and destabilization of the world. Now, despite these guns being 3D printable uh, for what, over a decade now, I believe, despite them being around for over a decade, that hasn't happened. In fact, I'm not personally aware of any murders allegedly committed by a 3D printed gun. I'm aware of lots of them being, you know, perpetrated with a traditional firearm, but I'm not aware of any with 3D printed guns. They may be out there, but there aren't many of them. And if there were, if they were there, I think we would get a lot more news coverage of it. But I don't know. I don't see all of the news. So if you know of it, drop it in the comments. Let me know. I would love to see uh, the, the news story about it. But that being said, what you can find are opinion pieces talking about how these untraceable ghost guns will cause the destabilization and disruption of the entire planet. I haven't seen that happen, though. So anyway, uh, this is Cody Wilson, like I said, and his company, Defense Distributed, was distributing these CAD files. They made it free. Anybody can just go on the website and download them. The problem with that was that some people in the government didn't like that, and so these CAD files were added to a list of munitions that are illegal to export. Now, I know that's silly because it's a CAD file, not a munition, but they determined that these CAD files were illegal to export. And due to the nature of the internet, you can't really control who is downloading a file, right? Because they maybe are in a different country, but using a VPN or whatever to make it look like they're in the US. And so they are able to download these things no matter where they are. That put them in the crosshairs of the Obama administration who charged Defense Distributed and Cody Wilson with criminal acts. And that was going on for a while. But then 2016 happened. Trump gets into office. And somewhere in 2018, they decide to go ahead and make this legal to remove these things from the list to say, no, what they're doing is fine. We're changing the rules. The rule's dumb. And, uh, and that was supposed to be that. They settled on the criminal case and everything was good. Until 
a bunch of attorneys general got all huffy about it and decided to sue Defense Distributed and the federal government. And I did a video on this back in 2018 when there was a an initial injunction in this case where Judge Lasnik up in Washington state issued an order stating that the Trump administration couldn't do what it was clearly legally able to do. That case had been going on and on and on, and another injunction was issued in May of 2020, because or March, I don't know. I think it was March of 2020. It says in the article, we'll get there. But basically, uh, they said, well, this, you know, this other injunction that you issued doesn't matter because we've taken over the rulemaking authority and we win. And we win here because uh, your injunction against this other organization doesn't matter. We've we've done the rule change here. And then another judge came in and shut that down. This this case, this decision from the Ninth Circuit undoes that more recent decision in 2020, which is important. I mean, again, it's probably not going to last too long because of the new regulations being proposed on May 8th and another fight will start. But here's the thing. The rulings in this case have been bad specifically because the law itself says that the judge cannot that a judge cannot review these decisions because that's what Congress wrote into the law that a judge couldn't review these decisions, that the executive uh, branch had the authority to remove or add items to this list and that the judge couldn't review it. But the judges just ignored that and said, yeah, of course we can, because that's what judges do. Well, the Ninth Circuit panel has said, nope, that's not how it's going to work. So here's the article. A divided Ninth Circuit panel on Tuesday lifted a court order against two Trump arrow rules that make it easier to share untraceable 3D printed gun blueprints. The blueprints aren't, I, I'm not sure what they're even saying. Are the blueprints untraceable or are the guns untraceable? If you don't know this, these 3D printed guns have to have enough metal in them to be traceable. They have to have enough metal in them to be detected by a metal detector. And there's a specific regulation on exactly how much metal that is. And so typically they have to add a metal plate to the side of the gun to make it detectable. And if they don't, that's illegal. It's been illegal for a very long time. That has never changed. This was never about that. This is never about making untraceable guns. This is about the blueprints themselves, the CAD files, the, in my opinion, speech, the transmission of information, of data. I, I assume you realize this, but you can own a CAD file. You can have access to a CAD file and not have the thing that it makes. Architects, for example, design giant buildings and they'll make a CAD file with uh, either stuff in the building or the building itself, like a whole giant thing. And they don't have a building like it still has to be made. It may never get made. That's the weird thing about information is it's just information until you use it to make something. And you can criminalize certain aspects of the possession of things like, for example, Right. Like making a gun that doesn't have enough metal to be detected by a metal detector. They have criminalized that. That's not changing. That's never changed so far. So this this idea that people are able to run around with impunity carrying carrying uh, all plastic pew pews is not correct at, in, in the slightest. But that's how it's always reported. And again, we don't we don't actually see any information about people doing this. So the appeals court ruling will lift restrictions on exporting specs for 3D printed guns. But President Joe Biden announced in early April that the Justice Department would issue new rules for ghost guns within 30 days. The Ninth Circuit's decision Tuesday overturned an injunction issued by a federal judge in Seattle in March of 2020. U.S. District Judge Robert Lasnik, who is, in my professional opinion, an idiot had blocked two rules that transferred regulatory control of 3D printed gun files from the State Department to the Commerce Department. The rules also removed ghost gun blueprints from a State Department list of munitions that require a license to export. 22 states led by Washington State sued to prevent the rule changes from taking effect. 
In a 25-page opinion, U.S. Circuit Judge Jay Bybee, a George W. Bush appointee, and Ryan Nelson, a Donald Trump appointee, notice what they're doing there, concluded that the courts lack authority to review the challenged rule changes. They found a 1976 law, the International Security Assistance and Arms Export Control Act, and its subsequent amendments forbid judicial review of State Department decisions on what is considered a defense article subject to regulation. You know how they found that? Because it says it in the law. It just says you can't actually review it. There is no judicial review on these decisions. It's, it's the plain language of the law. So that's how they found that. It's just because it says it. I mean, that, that's one reason. It's the main reason. Because Congress expressly precluded review of the relevant agency actions here, we vacate the injunction and remand with instructions to dismiss. In a dissenting opinion, U.S. District Judge Robert Whaley, a Bill Clinton appointee sitting on the panel by designation from the Eastern District of Washington, uh, <laughs> just, uh, mm, argued that his colleagues misinterpreted what Congress intended when it gave the president power to designate what items are considered defense articles and defense services under the law. Whaley wrote that a 1981 amendment to the law clarified that the president's removal power was separate from its designation power and was subject to congressional oversight. He said the majority disregarded a legal principle which presumes any words omitted from a statute should be deemed intentionally excluded from the law. I disagree with the majority's holding, in uh, which allows this regulatory system to escape appropriate oversight. But let's be very clear on something. This isn't a regulatory system. This is a deregulatory system. It's a deregulatory system. What is the oversight on removing something? on expanding freedom. This is my problem here. This is my problem with all of this, conceptually speaking. Making something illegal should have federal, should have judicial oversight because you're taking away my freedom. You're restricting my action. So I should be able to challenge that and say, no, you can't do that to me. But making my life more free by expanding my access to activities and ideas and information, that shouldn't be reviewable by a judge. Now, assuming they're not changing a law, right? Like, if Congress wants to pass a law, that's, that's one thing. But if Congress has delegated the authority to designate or undesignate something as illegal, when you undesignate it, when you remove it from the list, that shouldn't be challengeable because you're expanding my freedom and it's within the purview of what Congress gave power to the executive. So this is all just silly in my opinion. This is the correct decision. We'll see what Uncle Joe has planned for May 8th. You can check out this article if you want to read the rest of it and the other links and stuff like that. It's in the description below. I would love if you would drop me a comment and tell me what you think about 3D printed guns. I don't think they're the menace that uh, that they have been labeled. I think that's silly. We haven't seen any evidence that they are a menace. They still require a significant amount of time, skill, and resources to produce, and it's a lot easier to just go buy a gun. But that being said, maybe the future holds something different, and I would love to get y'all's opinions on it. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you found this somewhat informative, and hope it lifted your day. Have a good day. Peace. Peace.